So these are the first three definitions you need to know about 2D figures. What's two-dimensional mean again? It's just like flat figures, right? We're not talking about cubes here. We're not talking about prisms, that sort of thing. These are flat figures, flat surface. They have no depth. So at first, a polygon. A polygon is just a closed figure, which I'll show you some examples in just a second, whose all sides are segments. has no lines. It's just segments, line segments. A convex polygon, which you're going to see an example, and this will make more sense in just a second also, have no points of the lines are on the interior, and a concave has some of the lines pass through the interior of the polygon. The last vocab you need to know is something called a regular polygon. Regular polygon has all angles and sides congruent. So what yeah, what's a really easy example of a regular polygon? A square. All four sides of a square are the same. All four angles are the same. Are, are the same right? That would be a typical regular polygon. If it's not regular, we call it irregular. Most of the time they're irregular because there's not very many shapes. So there's, there's a lot, but most shapes that we draw don't have all four sides the same length, all four angles the same. Okay. All right, so let's talk about a polygon again. It said it's a closed figure, meaning like a triangle, it's a polygon. It's closed. There's no openings. It's made up of line segments. Okay. This figure would be a polygon. It's closed. It's made up of line segments. Okay. This figure would not be a polygon because it's not closed. It has an opening. Okay. Also, this figure would not be a polygon because it's not made up of line segments. It has curves in it. Okay. This figure would be two polygons, one here and one there. Closed figures made up of line segments. Okay. That's what a polygon is. So then we classify polygons into two categories called convex and concave. So I give you some figure, say I gave you this polygon, four-sided figure, and I ask you, is this convex or is this concave? And the way you find out is you, if you were to extend all the sides, if any of the sides cross through the interior of the polygon, then we go back to our definition. If some of the lines pass through the interior, we call it concave. If none of the lines pass through the interior, it's convex. So would this be convex or concave? This would be convex because none of the lines pass through the interior. Okay. None of the lines pass through the interior. There. If I gave you this figure, that's a polygon, right? If you extend all the lines... Is it convex or is it concave? concave? It would be concave because some of the lines pass through the interior. I would call that concave. Okay. Uh, one more. Good. That one's going to be concave for a number of reasons. When you extend the lines, there's going to be passing through the interior. Okay. Concave versus convex. So that's how we name those polygons. Okay. Then we have how many sides there are. How many sides they have, how we name them. So let's see what we know about these. You might have did some of these in grade schools. If it's a three-sided figure, what do we call that polygon? Triangle. I don't know what that says. Polygon. Three-sided figure is called a triangle. About a four-sided figure. Quadrilateral, right? Because it could be a square, it could be a rectangle. Quadrilateral. You won't need to memorize all these, but you, some of these you'll probably already know. Anyway, five. Pentagon. Six. Hexagon. 
Seven? Seven is heptagon. Heptagon. Eight. Eight's a common one. Octagon. Nine. Nine's a nonagon. Ten. Just decagon. Ten sided figure. Just, it can have any ten sides. If you want a regular decagon, it would have to have all perfect side, ten sides the same length. But Or any ten sided figure, we call it decagon. Okay. Eleven side, we don't have a name for. I'll show you how we name anything other than eleven. The last one we actually have a specific name for is a twelve. That's a dodecagon. Dodecagon. So the question is, how do we name figures 11, 13, 14, 100, a million? How do we name those figures? Okay. And all we do for those, like if I have an 11-sided figure or a 14-sided figure, I would call it a 11-gon. I would call this a 14-gon. Okay. So if you had a figure with 125 sides, it would be a 125 gone. Okay. That's how you name those. I don't know why 11 doesn't have its own, okay? but those all have its own because those are the most common. After that, we just call it by the number of sides and it gone. Okay. Questions about naming polygons? Hopefully somewhat. This is in this chapter. Though. So how do you find the perimeter of any polygon? Just add up all the sides. It's like if you were going to build a fence around it, you would just add up all the sides. Area. Area is different in a couple different figures. How would you find the area of a quadrilateral? Yep, you just take whatever the length times the width is. You multiply the two sides. Okay? Remember the units are always like squared. Like for example, if this was 4 inches and this was 10 inches, 10 times 4 is 40, inches times inches is inches squared. <coughs> So that, the area of that would be 40 inches squared because you multiply the units too. Um, we also have area of a circle. It's area equals pi times the radius squared. Remember the radius is the piece that runs from the middle of the circle to the edge. That would be the radius. So the area of a circle is pi times r Square. What is circumference? Okay. Good. It is circumference is. What, sorry, I should reword that. What does circumference mean? What am I talking about here? It's basically the perimeter of a circle, right? Because you can't add up all the sides of a circle because it doesn't have any sides. The circumference is how if you were to break that circle apart and stretch it out over a ruler or a meter stick or whatever, how long would it be? Okay. So its circumference is equal to 2 times, the pi, times pi times radius, which is also the same as diameter times pi. Because remember, that's the radius. The diameter is the whole thing. So if you put two radiuses together or two radii together, it's equal to diameter. So both of these formulas work for circumference of a circle. Okay. The other area I forgot to talk about is what about area of... A triangle. It's half of the base times the height. Why is it half? Why, where do they get that from? Do they just make that up? Cut. What's cut in half? Yeah. Yeah, like a four-sided figure is cut in half, right? If you had, if you had a rectangle, let's say simple, I could make two triangles. We know rectangles, base times height or length times width, but if I just made it a triangle, erase that. It'd be half of that, right? Or any four-sided figure for that matter, okay? So that's perimeter, area, and circumference. We've probably seen that before. Remember, units squared on area, okay? I want to find the perimeter of that triangle on that graph. So first of all, to find perimeter, we know we just add up all three sides of a triangle, right? If I had the distance of all three sides of a triangle, we would add them up. The problem is I don't have the distance of all three sides of the triangle. 
Okay. Because again, if you were to graph them, if I just quickly sketched it out here, five zero is going to be somewhere there. Negative one one is going to be somewhere there. Two four is going to be somewhere there. Right. So C, B, A. It's going to look something like that. Just a brief sketch. I need all three of these sides to find the perimeter. So let's just start with one. How could I find how long it is from A to B? I could count the units, but what if it's at an angle? Oh, you got to do distance. There you go. That's a distance, right? That's a distance. And the distance formula that we did a couple classes ago, it says you take the second x coordinate minus the first, square it, plus the second y coordinate minus the first, and square it. So, for example, if I wanted to find the distance, I'm going to put of A, B down here so I remember which one it is. I can find the distance from A to B. I'm just going to look at these two coordinates right now, A and B. That's all I care about. How far is it from A to B or B to A? Either way, it doesn't matter. If I call this the first X, the first Y, this the second X, the second Y. Okay. I would take the second X coordinate minus the first, square it, plus the second Y coordinate minus the first, square it. Keep simplifying that. This inside the parentheses is going to be negative 3, right? Negative 1 minus 2. If you square negative 3 that's in parentheses, is it positive or negative 9? should be positive, right? Because it's like negative 3 times negative 3. So that's going to be 9 plus, this is also going to be negative 3. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. The negative's in parentheses. That means you have to take negative 3 times negative 3, which is also 9. So it's going to be about square root of 18. We can punch that in our calculator and get an approximate decimal. So I know this is going to be square root of 18. Actually, let's, let's round that decimal off. Let's say we're going to round to one decimal place. If we round that to one decimal place, we're going to say it's 4.2 units from there to there. I have one side. Now I'm going to have to find the other sides. Right? <coughs> so let's say I want to find, it doesn't matter which one you find next, let's say A to C. I could find the C to B. Let's say A to C. The distance from A to C. Again, I'm just going to look at these two coordinates now. I'm going to call this the second x, the second y. I'm going to call this the first x, the first y. Formula says take the second x minus the first, square it. Add that to the second y minus the first, square it. 3 squared, 9. Negative 4 squared It's going to be, but it's negative 4 in parentheses, so positive 16. Right, negative 4 times negative 4. That's going to be square root of 25, which we know is 5. So that piece is going to be 5. And finally, I just need to find the distance from C to B. So I would go distance from B to C. I'd be looking at these two coordinates. Second x minus first x squared plus second y minus first y squared. 5 minus negative 1 is 6. 6 squared is 36. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. It's square root of 37. So if I get approximate decimal there. So now I have all three sides of this triangle. Now finding the perimeter is really easy, right? 6.1 plus 4.2, that's 10.3 plus 5, 15.3. It didn't tell me feet or inches, so I'll just say 15.3 units.